Baldur's Gate 3, the upcoming sequel to Baldur's Gate 1 and 2, is being developed on the 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons rule set. There have been a lot of changes to D&D since the 2nd edition that Baldur's Gate 2 was based off of. For example, there's a lot more classes to choose from and you don't have race restrictions. That said, having a basic understanding of the class features and mechanics is going to help you build more effective characters when you play Baldur's Gate 3. Last week we covered all the playable races, and now it's time to jump into the classes. Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition offers 12 playable classes, each with its own unique subclasses to choose from. Subclasses are similar to class kits that we saw in Baldur's Gate 2. They essentially allow you to specialize your character and opens up new abilities and skills that fit the theme of that specialization. This video is going to be a brief overview of each of the classes, and in later videos we'll be taking a closer look at each class individually. So if that's something that you're interested in, go ahead and subscribe. We're going in alphabetical order, right out of the player handbook, and we're starting with the Barbarian. This class is for those of you who want to channel your inner Conan or Hulk. This is the class for you if you prefer fighting shirtless, as Barbarians gain combat bonuses when not wearing armor. Their primary ability is Strength. They have the highest hit points of any class in 5th edition, as well as a variety of class features that boost their damage output, making them a serious threat on the battlefield. Barbarians use their inner rage and reckless attacks to increase their damage with melee weapons and gain resistance to physical damage. Now if you want to be good at everything, roll a bard. Their class features like jack of all trades and expertise make them the skill monkey of the party. Bards have a huge variety of tools both in and out of combat that make them extremely valuable to any group. Bards are performers and as such start the game with an instrument. They have access to spells like Vicious Mockery that literally let you deal damage to enemies and impose disadvantage by insulting them. Their primary ability is Charisma. A defining class feature is Bardic Inspiration, which lets them inspire their allies by giving them a d6 to add to any one attack roll, saving throw, or ability check. Next up is the Cleric. This is a strong class that can do it all. Depending on the deity your Cleric serves and the domain you choose, you can tank, heal, or deal damage with the Cleric class. The Cleric's primary stat is Wisdom, and they have access to a large spell list that spans healing, utility, and damage. At second level, Clerics gain the class feature Channel Divinity. Channel Divinity includes two abilities, one that all Clerics receive, which is Turn Undead, allowing them to force undead creatures to spend their turn moving as far from the Cleric as it can, and a second ability, which is dependent on the divine domain that the player chooses, and it can include things like read thoughts, gain bonus lightning and thunder damage, or even turning invisible. Like the cleric, the druid is able to fulfill many different roles in the party. Although they shine most as a support class, either by wild shaping into a big ass bear and charging into the front lines to tank, or keeping to the back and controlling the battlefield with their varied spell list. They have access to a wide range of conjuration spells that allow for some truly wacky and at times game-breaking scenarios, such as conjure animals, which you could upcast a fifth level to summon, for example, 16 elk that you ram at your enemies. <laughs> the fighter is a well-rounded and versatile class. You don't have a set primary stat, Instead, you would choose between dexterity or strength, depending on the fighting style and weapon type you plan to use. Fighters gain proficiency in all martial weapons, and at level 1 get to choose a fighting style to specialize in. At third level, they choose an archetype. And to give you an idea just how versatile this class is, you could build anything from a sword and shield battle master who protects and rallies their allies, to a dual-wielding Eldritch Knight who uses magic to buff their damage. Regardless of the fighting style or archetype you choose, all fighters gain the class features Second Wind and Action Surge, which allow them to heal themselves and deal additional attacks on their turn. Now, do you want to play more of like that ninja character who has mastered the martial arts? Well, meet the monk class. Monks don't wear armor. Hell, they don't even need a weapon. You could literally just run around half naked and punch your enemies to death. Monks harness magical energy called ki, and they can use their ki to bolster their defense, cast spells, or knock enemies prone. 
So yeah, if you're into parkour and you want to catch projectiles midair and throw them back at your enemies, you'll probably want to roll a monk. Are you interested in a fighter, but you also kind of want to play a cleric? Or do you want to play a cleric, but you don't want to deal with that huge spell list? Well, then Paladin's the class for you. Paladins are what's called a half-caster class, meaning they have access to spells and magic, but to a more limited degree than, say, a cleric or a wizard. They can fulfill quite a few roles in a party. They've got the ability to deal good damage while also off-healing, buffing their allies, and even tanking. Their primary stats are strength and charisma, and they have class abilities such as Lay on Hands, which allows them to heal wounds, and Divine Smite, which adds radiant damage to their melee weapon attacks. Like the fighter, they get to choose a fighting style to specialize in, as well as at third level, they take a Sacred Oath. Their Sacred Oath forever binds them as a paladin, and each Sacred Oath grants new powers and abilities. From Wilderness Warrior to Monster Hunter, the Ranger is an RPG staple. Rangers in 5th edition are another half-caster class. They combine a martial fighting style with nature and survival-inspired spells. The player handbook includes two archetypes, which you get to choose at third level, the Hunter or the Beastmaster. I do have to mention here that this is a bit of a controversial class. It's considered by many to be the weakest class of 5th edition. So much so that a few years ago, Wizards of the Coast released an unofficial rule set for a revised ranger. I'm really curious to see what happens with the ranger in Baldur's Gate 3. Do you think it'll be based on the player handbook or the revised ranger rule set? Let me know down in the comments. So there's also a rogue class in 5th edition, which you can pretty much guess what to expect here. If you want to be good at sneaking, trickery, or swashbuckling, you'll want to play the rogue. The rogue class really centers around the feature sneak attack, which gives them bonus damage on enemies when they have advantage on the attack or when they have an ally within melee range of the target. That means that when you're playing this class, you'll want to strategically set up all of your attacks in order to maximize your damage. Like the other classes, at third level, they'll get to choose an archetype. With the rogue archetypes, you may choose to go down a criminal path, maybe you specialize in assassination, or you decide to dabble in the arcane arts and gain the ability to summon a spectral hand that you can use for all forms of trickery. Next up is the Warlock. Warlocks gain their arcane powers by striking a deal with an otherworldly patron. This could be a devil, an archfey, or a great old one. They get to choose between special powers known as Eldritch Invocations and gain certain spells and abilities based on the patron they have made their pact with. They also gain a Pact Boon at third level, from which they can choose to gain a Familiar, a Special Pact Weapon, or a Book of Shadows. Regardless of the Patron you choose or the Pact you take, though, you can expect to be casting Eldritch Blast. A lot. It's one of the best cantrips in the game, especially when buffed by Warlock invocations such as Agonizing or Repelling Blast. And it's kind of the bread and butter for most Warlocks. All right, there's just two classes left to go, and I'm gonna roll these two together. And that's because they're the two main full caster arcane classes in D&D 5th edition. That's the Sorcerer and the Wizard. They have access to more or less the same exact spells with a few differences between the two classes. One is how they obtain their magical power. Sorcerers, they're just born with it. Yeah, they have an innate magical ability. Wizards, on the other hand, they've got to learn it. They dedicate their entire lifetime to learning and mastering one particular school of magic. As such, sorcerers learn and memorize all of their spells and therefore are limited to a certain number of spells based on their sorcerer level, while wizards require a spellbook to cast from. And because of this spellbook, wizards have the capability to access a near limitless number of spells. Sorcerer's primary ability is Charisma. They have a class feature known as Metamagic, which allows them to augment their spells in certain ways. They also choose a Sorcerer's Origin, which defines where their magic ability comes from and grants them additional abilities and features. The primary ability for a wizard is Intelligence. As mentioned, they have a spell book. In addition to adding spells to their book when they level up, if wizards come across a scroll in their travels, they can spend time and materials to transcribe that scroll to their book. 
So while other classes are limited to the spells that they can memorize or prepare for the day, wizards can cast any spell from their book as long as they have the spell slots, meaning that they have a spell for every situation. And depending on the school of magic they specialize in, they can gain certain bonuses when casting a spell of that magic type. And that's it, guys. Those are the 12 playable classes in Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. If you found this video useful, please give it a like. And be sure to subscribe, as we'll be covering each class in depth in the weeks to come, as well as following all the news during the development of Baldur's Gate 3.